everybody. It's David Levitt with Amudim Teaching Ministries, and welcome back to the series we're doing, The Aim of God's Word. We are on part four, and we're going to be talking today about how, uh, in particular, the statutes of the Lord that we can read about in God's Word, they give joy, they rejoice the heart. Uh, so that's one of the aims of God's Word, is to rejoice the heart. But again, here at Amudim Teaching Ministries, uh, what are we dedicated to? Amudim is the Hebrew word for pillars, and we're here to help God's people become pillars of truth in the midst of a crumbling world. We want God's people to be standing strong in the midst of things decaying around them. When you look at uh, pictures of ancient ruins and things like that, uh, what's left standing? Pillars. Yes, tattered. Yes, a little bruised. Maybe some erosion from the wind. But nevertheless, they are there standing thousands of years later. And really, our goal is to be standing for, well, all of eternity. But let's get started. We've, I, I think it's been, I mean, if I can say so, pretty great so far <laughs> this series, uh, The Aim of God's Word. Um, you got to understand, sometimes as I as I talk into this microphone, I've got notes, I've got direction, but it there's just things in my heart that come for you guys, um, and I want to say it, and sometimes it takes a little longer than I'd like. Again, I try to keep these to about 20 minutes, because I know you you got, I mean, time is valuable, and you guys are working, you're taking care of families, you're doing your own things in ministry, and I want you to just be able to be driving or walking, um, but I mean, even if you... Uh, I'd encourage you, if, if you don't have a good Bible study, um, use these as a Bible study. Uh, I know the Grace series, uh, Cassie, my wife, she made a great study guide to go with that. And that's what we're here for. We, we want to help you. We want to help you be a pillar of truth. Not just for yourself so that you can stand, but that also you can be a source of strength for others. Uh, I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I'm going to share this. And... I'm actually going to send this out uh, on an email here really soon. If you're not part of our email list and you'd like to receive emails from us, sign up in the link below. Uh, you can go and do that. I will not, you know, cram your inbox full of mail. I send out emails when I think I need to send one out. Uh, I, you know, I want to touch base with you guys, stay in touch, but I don't have like a day I do it or so many days a week. I mean, you might get two from me one week, and you might not get one from me for a month, so, or longer, I don't know, but uh, there's, a, there's a video series I'm working on, I'm teaching the youth at our congregation, uh, I'm, I'm just commenting basically through the, the Gospel of Luke, and I was talking about the kingdom of God in, in one of those videos, it may have been the first or second one in that series, you can go to the playlist and look at uh, the series on Luke there. But for whatever reason, the way I presented the kingdom of God in that 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 um, podcast, that audio teaching, um, it really, really impacted one of our listeners. And as they, they, they told me they'd never seen or understood the kingdom of God in that way, in its simplicity and who its ruler is, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And they were actually going um, out to run an errand and they... Uh, they like to pray for people while they're out or, you know, just witness to people, evangelize, uh, tell people about the Lord. And she came across a couple people uh, who were in a difficult place in life. And basically, she had just listened uh, to what I had taught on about the kingdom of God out of the Gospel of Luke 30 minutes prior. And she was able to just retell, retell what I said, and these both these people gave their life to Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and the Father, and have begun their journey into the kingdom of God. You know, that's an amazing thing. And so, we don't want to just help um, you stand. We want to help you to help others stand as well in this journey, because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's such a humbling story to know that uh, you know, when I get behind this microphone and talk, it's it's going out places I, I would never expect. But that's because of y'all. 
That's because of y'all. And so any way we can serve you here at OmniDeem in, in those ways, uh, we're really excited to do so. But let's get back to our subject here, uh, and that is the aim of God's Word. And today we're going to be focusing in on this specifically, Psalm 19, and we're going to be starting in verse 8. It really is the first part of verse 8, which says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Let's talk about it. Um, we've talked about how uh, you know the Torah is there. The aim of that is to have us return to the Lord himself, return our souls, return our life to him. And then yet uh, the last part we were on, um, the testimony of the Lord is short, making the uh, making wise the simple. And I was just excited sharing that. If you haven't heard that one, go back and listen to that one. That's part part three. This is part four here. And so today we're going to be talking about the aim of God's word and rejoice in the heart, in particular with his statutes. Now, what are his statutes? You know, we have statutes, we have commands. There's different words. Are they all synonymous? They actually are not synonymous. They're very similar, but a command and a statute, I personally don't consider to be synonymous. And let me explain the difference really quick. A statute is like an overarching concept or truth that that governs like a, how do I say, it's like a a large group of people. So the best way I can put it is like in America, uh, for example, the the driving age, the age you need to be to get a driver's license is 16. That's just a that's just a statute, okay? Or like think about some sort of Supreme Court ruling, all right? Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Uh, the legal age to buy an alcoholic beverage is 21. Okay, that is an overarching statute. Now, within that, there are specific laws and commands on what to do, how to drive a car, the laws you must follow. That can differ from state to state, city to city, things like that. But there's this overarching statute. You got to be 16. And you even see this in organizations and in companies. Um, They have certain policies and procedures that are unique but cover the entire company. All right, or the entire organization. That is a statute. Now I'm going to give you some more examples of statutes from the Word. That yes, within these there are specific commandments, but it's an overarching statute. And the thing is, these are right things. When when we t- step back and look at all the statutes of the Lord, the word right is yashar in Hebrew, and it means like to make straight. And when we look at all the statutes, they all fit together, and they're just right. It's all you can say. It's, it's just right. Let me give you an example. Sunrise. Okay? A sunrise. It's beautiful. It's just right. Sunset. It's just right, you know? The day comes, the night comes, and then you look at the stars. You may never have thought of that, but that is all the statutes of the Lord, that there would be a day in a night, okay, a sunrise and a sunset, stars, the moon. Okay, I'm not trying to be all feely, but it just feels right. You just know it's right. And you know what? It rejoices the heart. It rejoices the heart. What are some other statutes of the Lord? Well, a man and a woman getting married, entering into a marriage covenant. Now, I know that's gotten confused in America and some other nations, all right? But that is an overarching statute that the Lord has established in the earth that a man and a woman, okay, would enter a marriage covenant and then within that covenant be fruitful and multiply. Now, many people reckon two of the happiest days in their lives, two of the most days that they rejoice the most are what? A wedding, all right, when a man and a woman enter a marriage covenant, and then what? When a baby comes into the earth, okay, when a baby is delivered. Two of the most rejoicing days of a person's life, all right, for the most part. I'm not saying all the time, but that is a very common, common thing. Uh, What's another statute that 
that we are to work for income, that we are to work and that we, we work for money and in that way we can provide for ourselves and for our families and that we were really made to work. That is a statute. It, people, I have talked to many people and I've had my own seasons of being out of work. You know, it's not a good season. It does not rejoice your heart at all. There is something about putting in a good hard day's work that rejoices the heart. Well, why is that? Because it's a statute of the Lord. A good, productive, hard day's work uh, rejoices the heart. Uh, what is another statute of, of the Lord? Uh, well, to meet regularly together on sh- you know, Shabbat. To come together, whether you do it Saturday or Sunday, come together and worship the Lord and learn corporately. Now, again, within that, there's different commands on how to do it, right? There's diff- there's specific commands to a husband, to a wife uh, in the marriage covenant. There's specific commands on how to work. But again, the statute is an overarching concept that it's man and a woman get married, okay? And then they, they too can have a baby and that you do work, okay? And that will rejoice your heart and that you should meet together. Overarching kind of corporate, corporate ways of doing things. That is a statute. And think about the joy that comes to your heart when we meet together. I mean, smiles and hugs and laughter with friends and family, that brings joy to the heart. Well, why? Because we're following the statute, the Lord, and it's right. And it just just works. Just works. It's not confusing. Um, other what we call Moedim. Okay, these would be the appointed times. Moedim is the Hebrew word for appointed times. Uh, some people know this as the feast. The only issue with calling them feasts is not all the feasts involve a feast. <laughs> some of them do, but they're all appointed times of the Lord. Uh, these are overarching statutes that the nation of Israel was and is to keep. And they bring joy when we keep them. They're amazing times of remembrance and of learning and of hope for the future. And ultimately, when we go to the Word, all right, remember, his statutes found in his word, the aim of them is to rejoice our heart. When, when we go to the word and understand his statutes and we see how they all work together, and it's just like, it's just right, you know, it's just right. I, I hope I'm explaining this correctly. There are certain things I can't explain why they're right. You just know when you see it, it's like, yes, that, that's the meaning of life. That's what's good. That's what I want. You know, that's what we need. And usually it happens in relationships. Um, but like I said, sometimes it happens in creation, just enjoying creation. When all is at rest, when all is at shalom, it's like, yes, this is what's right. This is what's good. This is what's pure. His statutes are those things, and they rejoice our heart. And when we learn those things, and we begin to follow his statutes and say that those are right, and the statutes that the world has set, well, if they line up with God's word, they're okay. But if they're not, then that's not what we follow. What we have is order. We have an order of creation. Even in the family unit, an order of creation. The statute of the Lord is that there would be one man, one woman, and that the Lord would be head of their home. And that under the Lord, Yeshua would be the man, and then in subjection to him would be the woman. And then Yeshua is in subjection to the Father. That's order, and that's a statute of the Lord, and that rejoices the heart when done appropriately because we understand the commandments individually in how to do them. So that is the next thing. That is the next aim of God's word is to rejoice our heart when we understand and follow his statutes. So God bless you. I was able to keep it under 20 minutes today. But next time, we're going to be back with part five. We're going to be talking more about the commandments of the Lord and how those can enlighten our eyes. And I'm really excited to talk about that. I'm excited to talk about all of these because we're talking about God's word. It's, it's just, it's, it's what we got, y'all. It's what we got. And we should love it, embrace it, eat it up, encourage each other to eat it up, encourage each other in it, because these are the words of God. 
these are his plans, it is his will, and it's how we can know where we're going and what is right. So God bless you all, and I'll be back with you next time on part five of this series, The Aim of God's Word.